guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoilery gush on The Magician's Land by Lev Grossman. So as I said in my review, I adored this series. I didn't really love the first book. I will leave my review for the first book on the screen. I knew it had a lot of potential. I heard a lot of really amazing things from friends that enjoy the same kind of fantasy that I do, so I knew I wanted to continue, but the first book felt really clunky to me. But the last two books were so, so good. I just love that it twists around expectations continuously. Like, I, even in the last books, I was like, oh, this is gonna work out, you know, so this is gonna happen, and it n never did. And I still had that expectation, like, Lev Grossman is such a good writer that I still felt like these traditional fantasy, like, plot points and tropes were going to happen, and they didn't, and I like that they didn't, but they also, like, he did a good job of still building up that hope and still, like, commenting on that and expectations that you have. Like, for example, when Quentin's dad died and he went and was looking in his office and he was like, my dad's gonna be somebody you know, special. Like, he's gonna be the magician and, you know, he's looking through all of his stuff. And I was like, okay, he's gonna find something. Like, it's written as if, like, he's gonna find something. And then he obviously doesn't. He's like, my dad was normal. We didn't have a good relationship. Like, that's the reality. You know, because a lot of times fantasy is such an escape for so many people. Like, so you are looking for that, like, yeah, your dad's, like, a magical guy this whole time. He left you this, like, magical legacy. And this, like, series does a really good job of bringing it back and being like, yes, this is magic and magic is real, but you still have to deal with the reality of life. And, like, it's just done so well. And a similar thing happened with the chapters with Elliot in the beginning when he was fighting that, like, giant guy, I forget what his name was, and he was like, I'm going to defeat this guy and then Quentin is gonna get to come back. And you're like, yeah, yeah, he's totally gonna let him, like, this is awesome. And then it doesn't happen like that, you know? Like, and just the whole series in a lot of ways isn't fair. Like, Quentin gets kicked out of Fillory all the time. And at first I was like, yeah, you deserve it because you suck. You know, like, the first book I didn't like him. And later on, like, the second book I was like, that's not fair. And the third book I was like, he's not gonna get back to Fillory? Like, it was, it's like a devastating series. And, like, it's so dark and so sinister from, like, the beginning. And just, like, that magic isn't so magical all the time and that like bad things still happen and people die really gruesome deaths and people lose their hands and like horrible things happen and they get cheated out of stuff and like Plum's whole story too being brought in and her being like constantly running from like fate kind of but also being able to change her fate and it being different and like all of that is so so good. I also just really love how far Quentin has come as a character. Like, I was ready in book one to, like, really just hate Quentin, like, the entire time. Like, I was like, I'm not reading this for Quentin. Like, he sucks. He is so whiny, and, like, he's flawed, and I appreciate that he's flawed, but, like, he's really annoying. And then the second book, he really, really grew on me. And by the third book, I was like, you've come so far. Like, him being a teacher and just, like, trying to, like, just do his best and also know that, like, you just have to keep going and you just have to keep dealing with stuff and, you know, nothing's ever going to be perfect. And that at the end, when it came full circle and he's like, I'm not going to go back to Fillory, I'm gonna do my own thing. It's just like, oh. And then like creating his world, like that was another thing too. When they were creating the world, I was like, the world's gonna be great. It's gonna be perfect, like the first time they created it. And then like obviously Alice is in there and it's all just like messed up because he hasn't dealt with like all this emotional trauma that he has. And I was like, I went through all that and look at this crappy world you created with Alice in there. And I wasn't expecting the Alice thing to come back around. I was like, okay, I think Alice is gone. Like, but then, you know, she came back. And that whole like discussion that they had where she was just like, I hate you, yelling at you, you brought me back to make yourself feel better, like, I didn't want to be back, blah blah blah, like, that whole discussion was very real, and it was really good to listen to on audiobook, too, because, like I said, I listened to this book on audiobook, and that scene was done so well, like, uh, chills, honestly. But that scene was just done so well, because you just really felt how angry she was, and how much time had gone by, and how, like, her experience was, and, like, I really love how varied and complex the female characters are in this series, because there was definitely a chance for them all to be just a certain way. <laughs> after I was so rudely interrupted, what I was saying was the female characters are all just so varied. I love Julia the most. She's definitely my favorite. Absolutely. I wish we saw even more of her in the last book. Like, I'm glad she came back, but I loved her story so, so much. But I really appreciate how far Alice came. I really like learning more about Janet in this book, too, and her whole little, like, side story with the axes and how angry she was and, like, her upbringing and stuff. That was really great. And even the addition of Plum, like, I didn't really expect her at all. Like, I didn't expect us to have a brand new character coming in, and then her whole, like, 
Chetwin thing coming in and her like being a part of everything and also not being a love interest like we only really have Alice as a love interest we kind of had Julia as a love interest from the beginning but also just being like representative of like high school love and getting over crushes and stuff like that because in book two she's really not she's not about that <laughs> with him and Plum wasn't either like it was very it was blatantly said multiple times like we're not together we're not together we're not together and I thought that was a really good friendship as well and like a really good like kind of mentorship and stuff so I loved the female characters in this. I just thought it was a really great ending as well, like everything tied up so wonderfully. You have them going back to Break Bills, you have them going to like Break Bills South, you have like all of this stuff, them turning back into like, you know, animals to go to Break Bills South, you have like the creation of the world and you have them seeing Penny and all of this stuff is brought back up and it's so wonderful, all of that, all of that stuff. Like all these different characters are brought back in and at the end having all of them too, like having Julia pop back up and having like Quentin save Fillory and like recreate it and he was like Fillory's god and like it's so perfect and then after he's like, you know, I don't need to go back. Like I'm, I'm fine, I'm gonna do my own thing. Like Alice and I are gonna do our own thing and I'm gonna create my own like thing and we're gonna go and explore and like it's so perfect like letting go of those like ambitions that you and goals you had when you were younger and being like things change and like I'm not supposed to be in Fillory and Fillory's not for me and like I helped save Fillory and I helped create Fillory and Fillory's very important to me but like ultimately that's not what I need to do. I just have a lot of feelings about like how great of a conclusion it was. I also just started the TV series. Now I already know that the TV series is very different than the like books I've, I've been told like numerous times. So I'm going in with really low expectations. But I'm liking like the casting so far and I'm even liking some of the shows that they're making that are a little bit different. I've only watched one episode. But I like seeing it like on screen and stuff. I'm interested to see like how different things are. Like I'm definitely going in knowing things are different, knowing they're gonna change things, knowing they're changing characters because like I think instead of Janet we have like Margot. I don't know. So I'm really interested with that and it looks like it's gonna be like very very different and I'm excited. They're also making it way more diverse obviously because the Magician series as a book series is pretty white but they have a ton of diverse characters in the TV show which is gonna be really cool and I think it has potential to go even darker and also seeing some of the gross stuff that's happening in just the first like episode is really funny. So I have realistic expectations for it. It could be another really great fan favorite TV show for me that's very different from the books because I tend to actually like series that diverge a lot from the books so we will see. But comment down below and let me know what you thought of The Magician's Land and also let me know if you're watching the TV show and your thoughts. Again, I know that it's different so if you're like really mad at it for being different, like I know, obviously. So comment down below and let me know all of your thoughts. Was she a big pain the entire time? Being all whiny and crazy? What the heck? So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!